Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Welcome to Bible study tonight. You can be seated. Let's jump right into it. We are dealing with the ninth sign of emotional maturity. Now, I can't tell you how important it is for you and for all of us to continue to learn about how to mature emotionally. We have spent a lot of time um, seeking spiritual maturity, and, and that's great. But you can't ignore your emotions. You can't ignore that you have feelings. You can't ignore when you're hurt. You, God gave you emotions, you know, to be a blessing to you. And sometimes as Christians, we want to act like we don't have emotions. You know, you, you, the problem is you, you, you don't want emotions to have you. You don't want to be led and you don't want to be governed by your emotions. And so we've got to learn how to mature emotionally because a lot of things we do in demonstrating the character we have, it comes through immature emotions. And while you may be spiritual and you know the scripture and you talk in tongues and you pray an hour a day, uh, that's all great. But I mean, think about what happens when it's time to test your character and the emotional immaturity causes you to just not carry yourself in a way that will draw other people to want to be like you. And so people are watching, people are looking, and they're seeing how you carry yourself and how you respond to certain things. And the way you develop in your emotions will really speak louder than anything else when they see your response. So here is the ninth sign of emotional maturity, and you're going to love this one. Tonight, we're going to talk about approachability. Are you approachable as a Christian? And you would think, oh, maybe that's something that you would deal with in the business world. And I am telling you, it is a huge deal where your Christianity is concerned. Let's just kind of break this open here. Emotionally mature people are able to, and they prefer to talk, watch this, emotionally mature people prefer to talk with people and not at people. With people and not at people. They have genuine empathy for others. In other words, you're not so quick to judge somebody without first of all asking yourself, I wonder what it was like to be in their shoes. Right? You have genuine empathy for others. You have an open mind. <clears throat> and you work towards not being judgmental of others, knowing that judgments are often based on preconceived notion that can uh, impede your ability to know someone and to know the truth of what they're really going through. So in order for us to shine our lights brighter and in order for us to extend the grace uh, God has offered us to the world, we've got to be approachable as Christian people. And so being approachable means, and this is not the only definition I'll give today, but I want to build up to even a greater definition, but being approachable means we must not hide under the guise of being perfect, okay? But under the reality that through Christ we are being made perfect. It, you, you, I've, I've always had a hard time approaching people that appear to be flawless. They ain't got no problems. They are flawless, they are perfect, and, and I, I, I have a hard time with that. And being approachable means we, are, we, we, we will not hide under the guise of being perfect, but under the reality that through Jesus Christ we are being made, we are being perfected, okay? Approachability is an, an important aspect of interpersonal relationships. And because of our witness that we want to put forth towards other people, it becomes very important to us where winning souls are concerned. 
It refers to the ability of a person to be easily approached or, or to be accessible to others. In other words, approachability is emphasized as a key characteristic of a godly person. It's a key characteristic of a godly person. So the scriptures encourage us, and we want to look at these scriptures tonight. They encourage us to be approachable in order to build meaningful relationships. It's very interesting at church in these days. People are just not engaging in developing men, uh, 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 meaningful relationships. We just kind of come to church, we leave out, and nobody's approachable, and we're just kind of there to get what we need, and later on, I'll see y'all later. But uh, I believe that's going to change, amen? amen. I, I see it changing here at World Changes, and it's an amazing thing. I see people hanging out in the parking lot, and I'm trying to figure out why y'all not in your cars. You're like, there's already enough traffic. Ain't no use of me going nowhere because ain't nobody else going nowhere, so I might as well fellowship. And that's a pretty encouraging thing to see. And so the scriptures encourage us to be approachable in order to build those relationships with others and to be effective in fulfilling our God-given purpose. So let's look at some scriptures, and then I want to show you some, uh, uh, maybe I think about eight ways of uh, things that you can do to become an approachable person. Proverbs 18.24, you're familiar with this. Let's look at the King James tonight. Proverbs 18.24 says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly or approachable. <laughs> and there is a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. So this highlights being approachable in order to cultivate meaningful relationships. If you are that man that wants to see that kind of relationship develop in your life, are you willing to be friendly? Are you, and, and to be friendly involves, are you willing to be approachable? Look at Matthew chapter 7 and 12. Matthew 7 and 12. He says, therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. This verse encourages us to treat others the way we would like to be treated, okay? And that, that includes being approachable. That, that includes being open to others. You know, sometimes we can get the attitude, I'm just not open to anybody. And maybe, maybe God, God created you just for that encounter right there. I mean, God, God knows about connection, and we're believing God for divine connections, and you've got to be open to those divine connections and be willing to be approachable. And then 1 Peter chapter 3 and 15, and then we'll kind of get started here, land some <clears throat> groundwork first. 1 Peter 3, 15, he says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. So be approachable and be ready to share your faith with other people. Be approachable and be ready to share your faith with other people. So accountability can also be defined as the quality of being friendly, open, and easy to approach. Friendly, according to these scriptures, open, and easy to be approached. It involves being approachable in both your attitude and your behavior towards other people. Now, <clears throat> this is going to be pretty cool here. I'm, I'm just going overboard with the practicality. If I talk about something, if I see something, if I notice something in Scripture, the only thing that's ringing in my ear is practicality, practicality, practicality. I hear what you're saying but I, I want to know what I need to do to arrive at this point of what you're talking about. So to become approachable, we've got to cultivate certain characteristics that make you more receptive to other people, okay? So that's what we want to look at. We want to look at eight of those characteristics that I believe if you'll start cultivating those, you'll find yourself developing that approachability that uh, will demonstrate your emotional maturity. It requires emotional, emotionally mature people to display this accountability. And so number one, number one, be genuine. Be genuine. You know, finding a genuine person 
is almost become a lost art in today's society. Okay, let me break it down. The church has perfected phoniness. <laughs> And, you know, behind all of our scriptures and spirituality, where is the genuineness? So many are creating an image in public and never showing any faults or mistakes. And I think that's a mistake. I think it's a mistake for, for you to become a Christian, that you join a church, and then you, you build this image of flawlessness. You ain't going through nothing. You ain't got no issues. Everything is perfect. Leave it a be but household. That doesn't really minister to me. I, I'm like, you're too, you're too perfect for me to want to have anything to do with. I'm just like, you know, touching out the unclean. I feel like a mud pot, you know? <laughs> you're, you're the gold pot. I'm the mud pot. And, and, and not, that you, not that you glory or have this thing about not being there yet, but we constantly need to demonstrate to people that we are on a journey just like they're on a journey. And on that journey, you may have a flat tire. And on that journey, your radiator may run hot. And on that journey, you might have to take an exit. And even on that journey, you might get lost. And it may be some time before you can find your way back on the road that leads to your destination. But that's what Christian life should be. It's a journey. Say that out loud, that it is a journey. Christian life is a journey. Amen? And so when you pass somebody with a flat tire, you don't, you don't throw judgment out the window. When you pass somebody and their radiator overheated, you don't throw judgment out of it. And we do that in church. We see people, Christians, who are on a journey and, and, and they fell into sin. And it's like you want to automatically judge them. It's like, I don't understand this. It's like, okay, I don't, I don't care how bad the thing was. They're on a journey. And, and I don't know, maybe it takes some people a lot longer to change their tire than it does other people. But we... <laughs> okay, let me, let me leave that alone. You know, but I do think it's something we need to look at, um, not to create these images in public that, you, that you know, you're never showing your faults and mistakes. The scripture, two, two times I think I went over to you, two scriptures I showed you where the Bible says, make room for the faults of others. Make room for the faults of others. And we have no room for the faults of other people. They make, a, they, they, they make a, a, they fall into sin or they have faults and you just, you have no room for that. And it's like that something needs to, to change, and, and you, you're just not approachable when you do that. Our society seeks to rise above the reality that everyone is not perfect. And in fact, none of us are. But we refuse to, I don't know what that is. So I really want to camp here, so I probably need to do a series on this, but it's like we got to stop participating in perfecting phoniness in the body of Christ. It is okay for when somebody come and say, what's going on? You say, you know what? There's some, some really wild things happening right now, and we're going through some things, but um, we believe God. And that's how you say it. You say, well, I don't want to speak down unbelief. Well, I just showed you how to do it. This is happening, this is happening, but we're still in faith, and we still believe God. But at least I know where to come from. You know, sometimes I ask people, hey, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. And then I want to say, well, how are you really doing? I recognize this. I was in London uh, one year getting, getting ready to minister at a conference, and there was this other pastor who I knew I hadn't seen in a long time. And I, I looked at him, I said, hey, man, how you doing? And, he, and here's what he said. He said, oh, it's been the worst year of my life. I've been divorced. Uh, I lost this and I lost that. And uh, yeah, it's been something else. And I said, good, good, praise the Lord. I didn't even hear him. I didn't even hear it. I thought he was going to just give the normal answer. Hey, man, how you doing? Blessed and highly favored of the Lord. But it was a shock when he said, uh, uh, I don't feel blessed, and I don't feel like I'm highly favored, and I'm divorced away from the woman and the love of my life, and it's been the worst year of my time. And I, I was so insensitive. You follow what I'm saying? And I thought, wow. And I apologized to him. I said, I, 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 was, I was ready to hear the, the, uh, the Christian church or at church answer. And I told him, congratulated him later, and I said, thank you so much for being genuinely honest. Because you'll find out that genuineness and honesty, they really go hand in hand as far as becoming an, an approachable person. Uh, number two, not only be genuine, number one, but number two, be humble. Be humble. You understand that you are not perfect and are open to learning from others. You are not perfect, and, and, and you're open 
for, to, to learn some things from others. Look at Proverbs uh, 11 and 2, where this point is concerned. We're talking about the characteristics that, need to, that we need to cultivate to develop this approachability. Proverbs 11 and 2 says, When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly or the humble, he says, what happens? Wisdom comes. And so we want to be, we want to be humble. It's, 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 it's pretty easy to be approached when you are demonstrating a lowly heart, a humble heart. Number three, and we talked a little about this, empathetic, be empathetic, be empathetic. You are able to put yourself in the shoes of others and understand another person's perspective. Be empathetic. You know, when you see somebody, and, and listen, you know, people can always take things the wrong way, but when you see somebody who goes up and they, 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 they have a gun and they shoot people, uh, it, that, it didn't start there. That, that's, that's something that grew from something. And you have to ask yourself, wonder what they had to go through to arrive at this point. Wow. We're so quick to judge people of, of all kinds of issues that we see in society. But, but when, you're, when you have some empathy, you realize that's not the beginning of it. They're, they're just, they, w let's back up some. If I could get in their shoes, what did they have to walk through in order to end up at this particular place? We're supposed to be doing that as Christians. We're not supposed to be doing the same thing that the news media are doing or the politicians are doing. We're supposed to be doing it as Christians. We're asking ourselves, what, had, what happened for this 15-year-old kid to do this? Wow. It's just, changed my, it's just changed my whole perspective rather than me looking at things. I, you know, I, right now I'm just possessed with this, uh, this uh, vision that God's working on where the homeless is concerned and transforming people back into a workable situation. And, and I'm just like really willing to pay like millions to be able to get this done. And, but homelessness is traumatic. There's trauma that's around that. And then you, you know, I know I have, you bump into brilliant people with master's degrees. And empathy should come to say, what, wonder what happened. Somebody say, they own drugs. See, drugs and alcohol, that's trying to cover something up. What, 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 what was trying to be covered up? What, what's, what, what was trying to be dealt with? Empathy. That's, that, that comes from emotional maturity that Christian people should have. But when you're spiritually deep with no emotional maturity, you won't have empathy. And you won't be approachable because you're too good. You're too clean to be approachable. I, I'm so glad I got a hold of this. I don't have to wear a three-piece suit on Wednesday night Bible study anymore. <laughs> It's, it's wonderful. I don't, I don't have to wait on Sunday morning anymore. <laughs> wow. Uh, Romans 12, let's look at that. Romans 12 and 15, where this point of, of empathy is concerned. He says, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. That's the, that is the definition of empathy there. What is he saying? Get in the shoes of the folks who are rejoicing and rejoice with them. Uh, get in the shoes of those who are weeping and weep with them. But you can't weep with them or rejoice with them until you put on the shoes and walk the path that they walk. That really changes your mind about a lot of stuff. Nobody cares about how much you know. They're only concerned about how much you care. Amen? Number four, be a good listener. Cultivate this characteristic. Be a good listener. Dale Carnegie would often talk about what a good listener was, and he would, he would always talk about how he was with this person and, and um, uh, a good conversationalist, and, and he would just be talking, 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 and they would just sit there and listen, listen, listen. And at the end of it, he says, you know, man, you, I love it. This was, this was a great conversation. The man hadn't said anything. <laughs> be a good listener. You are attentive and interested in what others have to say. 
you are attentive and interested in what other people have to say. It, it's just not about you always wanting to share about how much you know. You follow what I'm saying? In fact, look at this, James chapter 1 and 19. Be a good listener. Cultivate that. And the reason why I say cultivate that because I know you may not be here at this particular point, at this place of being approachable, but you can cultivate it. And that's with everything in life. That's with everything that you discover when you come here, church. I, I'm not ready to condemn you because you're not at that, at that space right now. Why? Because this church is a part of that cultivating. It's a part of that journey that we're taking. Perfect people don't come to church. This is a hospital. This is for people who are in process. And we respect the process. James chapter 1, 19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, let him be slow to speak, and then let him be slow to wrath. I tell you, that goes together. Swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. You got two ears and one mouth. You should listen twice as much as you do talk. Number five, these are things that deal with emotional maturity. Number five, be non-judgmental. Be non-judgmental. We're Christians. We're still trying to find a way to judge people. When Jesus says, I didn't come to judge the world, he uses the word in the King James, I didn't come to condemn the world, but it means judge. And so you do not criticize or condemn others, but rather you seek to understand them. But we're quick to condemn and criticize, but we don't seek to understand. That's the kind of society we're living in right now. Dude, it's crazy out there. The mindset, the attitude, the way people think, the, the things that people believe, uh, they didn't want God's truth, so they have their own truth. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy out there. And I tell you what, that's why we've got to maintain the light of the gospel of the grace of God and show people Jesus. Listen, they may not have been able to see Jesus, but we can be, and they may not even know how to read the Bible, but we can be living epistles and they can read our life and our character but we've got to be approachable first in order for that to have any benefit. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. Be non-judgmental, not criticizing and condemning others, but how can I understand them? And it takes time. It takes, it, you, you got to have people to help you with this. You know, you, you're so used to quickly doing that, just say, no, 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 let's get in their shoes. You know, let's, 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 un, let's see if we can understand what, what happened here. Matthew 7, 1 and 2. He says, judge not that you not be judged. He says, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Okay, you can talk law, you can talk grace, but uh, my grandmama told me what, what goes around comes around. And, and it, it seems to still be true. It, it's just kind of amazing. Some of the same stuff you did somewhere else comes right back around and bites you in the <laughs> place where you know you've been bit. <laughs> yeah, man. Number six, be loving. If you're going to be uh, approachable one day, be loving. Listen, you genuinely care about others and you seek to show them the love of Christ. Be loving. Ask yourself that when you are at a restaurant and nobody may not even know your name, dude, but they'll probably always remember you based on how you carry yourself, your attitude, how you speak to them, all that kind of stuff. Be loving. Of course, I like 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 7. Um, Turn there, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 7. You know, you can genuinely care about others and seek to show them the love of Christ. I mean, but it, it's genuine, genuinely caring about it. I don't want to be somebody's assignment, you know what I mean? Or, you know, I'm supposed to. You know, a, a genuineness that's coming out of your heart. People can tell when something is genuine and, and it's real, okay? And they can also tell when it's practice and, uh, and being performed. 1 Corinthians 13 4 through 7 says, Charity or love suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. 
He said, it does not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not our own, it's not easily provoked, it thinketh no evil, uh, rejoices not in iniquity, but it rejoices in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So I said, Pastor Dollar, I don't know if I'm there yet. Yeah, but you can start and you can depend on God to help you to get there. I, like I said, I'm not here tonight trying to place you in a position where you're flawlessly, perfectly set in all of these characteristics that I keep saying have to be cultivated. But at least you know the direction. At least you know what you need to do, the signs that you need to be, be noticing. Number seven, number seven, approach others. Approach others. To be approachable means you must be willing to approach others as well. You must be willing to step up to the plate and, and approach someone and speak to them. You must be willing to open yourself up to someone uh, and, and, and create a sense of, of openness. We talk about you being approachable. Part of that development is approaching others. You know, uh, Jesus said, go into all the world and, 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 and preach my gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all truth whatsoever that he has taught and shared with them. Um, I don't know what happened to that. I know, when, I know when we first started our church, all we did was to soul win. Um, one Saturday, like I, the story I tell, Tap and I, we'd soul win all Saturday. That was our Saturday activity. That was our Saturday date. Let's go and win some souls. And we went into this um, low-income apartment area and knocked on doors, and I was concerned about Tap. I said, I, do you think it's safe for you to, you know, do that by yourself? She says, God take, takes care of me better than you do. <laughs> I was like, okay. Feisty little old girl. We're not even married yet. <laughs> so I waited around to see what the first guy was going to do. <laughs> she knocked on the door. He opened the door. Um, <laughs> <coughs> she said, can I have a moment of your time? She said, oh, baby, you can have all my time. <laughs> you know what's after this? Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Now, you listen to what I'm saying. I mean, she was pretty tough and had the man praying. And, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, she, he got born again. Yes, ma'am. Let me tell you something. There's something about you approaching other people that really allows God the opportunity to say, now that you're approaching them, I'll put some words in your mouth. I'll, I'll, I'll lead you. I'll guide you. I've been trying to approach this one myself. I just needed someone who would allow me to use them to, to approach. You're always sending God somewhere. God, go to the hospital. God ain't no errand boy. Amen. I mean, two-thirds of his name is go. It's like we've got to somehow cultivate that back in our system. I don't know what it is. I, we, we, we just don't seem to have the time of day to witness to people. I mean, at least, hey, you want to go to church with me? What church you go to? World Change? At the Crumble Church. <laughs> How much money I got to bring in order to get in? You're mature enough to know how to get past that. You're mature enough to go past that. In fact, you offer them, I'll give you $25 if you go to church with me. You, you be the one to take the excuses away from people. I don't know what it is. This thing that needs to be cultivated has slowly disappeared. Disappeared under shame. Disappeared under selfishness. Disappeared under, I don't have time to do that. Disappeared under... You know what, you know, if God wanted them to come, he'll tell them. Now you're getting deep. Somebody had to tell you. Somebody ministered to you. Somebody shared Jesus with you. Somebody prayed with you. Somebody showed you the way. And now all of a sudden, God just cancels this whole program, and he doesn't need us to go and disciple and minister to people anymore. No, we got to pick that up. I'm praying that, that we pick that up. We figure out a way to pick that up. Even if you start with unsaved family members until you get bold enough to go to the park and get cussed out. Because that, that'll happen sometimes. I remember a friend of mine, we were in college together, and he was just intense. Ken, the guy that used to sweat all the time, 
He was, he was, he, he went to the store. Then he get, he went up to the lady and he said, can I pray with you? And she cussed him out. And, uh, <laughs> and he starts sweating. And he says, well, I, I guess you don't want me to pray with you. I'm like, you think, <laughs> you know, but he didn't quit. He didn't quit. That was one of our top soul winners on campus. He get cussed out and he keep going. He get cussed out and he keep going and he just keep going. And, and then, you know, I think a few times he led, he came into Bible study and had, had about 10 people following him. Well, who are these folks? He says, I don't know. I just won. I just ministered to them on the way and got them saved. And they, they came to Bible study with me. I am praying to God that he will get on every member of World Changers Church International and it'll no longer be about come and see my show. It'll be about come, let's get born again. Let's get saved. Let's get your life changed. Let's get you pointed in the right direction. And I am the living epistle and I allow you to read my character in my life today. And now I am approachable because I approach. I'm willing to approach other people. Amen. I was in, um, well, when uh, the Attorney General of the United States, I was up in the Capitol, you know, doing some meetings back in that day. I was heavily involved in some things. And, and uh, he invited me in his office. And this is the Attorney General. He said, I heard you're filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I said, I am. He looked around, closed the door. He said, can we pray in tongues just for a few minutes before somebody come in here? I'm like, boy, you ain't even saying nothing. Come on. Red boy, shout la And I, I, pray, I prayed in tongues with the Attorney General of the United States of America. Yeah. He felt like he could approach me to ask, was that all right? Sure is. Boy, you ain't said nothing. I feel comfortable now. Let's go to the White House and see if we can throw some of this on them, you know? <laughs> Amen. And then finally, be honest. And like I said, genuine and honesty, they go together. Just being genuine is a major factor, and so is the life of honesty. Are you willing to do that? I'm not transparent when I minister to people for no reason at all. I'm transparent intentionally and on purpose. You need to know that a pastor goes through stuff. You need it to know about my physical body being attacked with sickness and, and disease. You needed to know that. Why? You needed to see me losing weight and getting down to 159 pounds and wondering what's going on. And you needed to see me come here and not hear me complaining about it. Oh, church, pray for me. Pray for me. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus. You needed to see that. So you can say, you know what? I saw that. I saw that. I can do that. I can do that. I can go through and come out better on the other side. Amen. So, so are you willing to be honest and in some cases transparent about your life? Well, you know, that's my life. I don't, I don't like sharing everything with everybody. I ain't trying to say you're sharing with everybody, but there are some people that God will bring to you and give you a peace to tell them the reason why I know I'm telling you the truth because I used to be you. I have seen this movie. I know exactly how it ends. Please listen to me. And so I'm really excited about this series we're in because we're talking, we're talking practical things. We're talking things that will help you to, to mature in your emotions. And the number one reason why a lot of people are in trouble today, in jail today, is because they allow their immature emotions, their immature negative emotions to guide and to govern their lives. And if we're going to be better in this life, then we've got to mature in our emotions. Did you get anything out of that tonight? I'm done. Now, if you would, close your eyes and bow your heads with me right now. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share this word tonight. And I thank you, Lord, that those who are hearing, those who are studying with us, that they are growing and they are maturing in their emotions. Father, I thank you that, that we're on this journey and, and we, we don't carry condemnation with us on this journey. We don't carry shame on this journey. 
We don't carry guilt on this journey, but we carry total dependence on you, Lord. And I pray for those who are here tonight and those who are streaming in with us tonight that no matter what they are going through, whatever they're facing, they're going to be all right. And I thank you for the help of the Holy Spirit in their lives and that you will make them approachable Christians, that you can use them and they will be meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. And I am so grateful to you for that. Thank you that you've committed to work in us. Thank you that you've committed to work through us. And thank you, Lord, that you have committed to perfect us and we'll be ready the day that Jesus returns. We love you. We appreciate you. We don't want to do anything without you. You are his majesty, the king. And we praise you for that right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Thank you, everybody. Good night.